We will finally be adding blood and gore to our game. It is actually one of the most requested features from you guys. A feature that's been suggested over and over again in our comment section. You see, our in the game is a reverse RPG game where we play as a monster instead of the usual RPG game heroes. And adding blood and gore to our indie game is fundamental to make this monster game more immersive. In this devlog, our main goal is to make a feature that simulates realistic blood and gore or monster RPG game. And with the end of this video, we will test a full combat with the new feature added. So stick around, I really would love to hear your thoughts on this feature. If you're new here, I'm June and I'm making a game where you play as a wisp, a glowing ball of light who can transform into different monster types to fend off human invaders exploiting your island home. So let's begin. In our current state, when we hit an enemy, they just do their normal animations like there's nothing hitting them. So to fix this, we will add a hit layer and add a hit animation to blend with the main animation layer. This way, for every time the enemy is hit, it will mix the hit animation with the current animation. Let's test it and compare. Here's an old enemy with no hit layer. There's no feedback indicating that he's being hit. Let's slow it down so we can see it clearly. See? No feedback. Now, here's the new enemy with the hit layer mixed in. Let's slow it down. As you can see, every time we hit the enemy, it shows a subtle feedback that it is being hit, no matter what animation it is playing. With this new feature added, we can now visually feel our hits connecting with the enemy. Now, off to the next feature, Blood and Gore. For this feature, we'll be using Decal's Projection. For those of you who are still new to game dev, Decal Projection is a game object in Unity that lets you project images to surfaces, just like this. As a solo indie game developer, I don't really have a lot of time to make these decals. So, to make our development faster, I acquired a new art asset for our blood. This comes with decals and prefabs ready for any blood related features. Basically, how this works is we clone blood from different blood prefab selections, then we project decals on the surface. At the same time, we project decals to the objects hit, in our case, the enemies. I'll leave the blood asset link below in case you're interested. So I got a new blood asset and tested the package out of the box and it seems to work fine. I first tested it on the enemies, then I tested it on myself. Blood splatter seems to work fine and the decals look good and realistic on different surfaces. My first issue with this new asset is with the decal overlapping with the enemies and the player. What we want is for the decal to only display on the ground and ground objects like trees and rocks. We don't want it to project on the player and enemies. We will be fixing this issue later by the end of this video. For now, we will focus on integrating the blood assets to our current hit system. As you can see, the blood system that we have will instantiate blood as we click the mouse button. In our game, we want the blood to instantiate when we hit an enemy. So to fix this, we just need to copy the code from the demo and integrate it with our weapon damage dealer, which is the script in charge of weapon hits. Now let's test it. It seems to be working, but as you can see, there are only two variations of blood cloned. So let's fix this by adding more blood prefabs to our script. Now let's test it seems to be working fine. Every time we hit the enemy, it clones a different prefab including the new ones that we've just added. Now, with the blood splatter in place, we now want to have blood attached to the enemy when we hit them. We want the enemies to be drenched in blood every time we make the blood splatter. As of the moment, the default blood asset script instantiates a blood decal to the nearest bone of the game object which results in unwanted decals projecting to different body parts. So to fix this, I made each blood attachment as part of my rig, and we'll have it active one by one once we hit the enemy. Then let's assign the prefabs to the script so that we can modify it later on once we hit the enemy. Let's test the blood decals on our rig to see if the decal sticks with the body part. As you can see, as the head moves, the blood decals follows its movement. Now let's test it activating. Let's hit the guard and see if our attached decals are set as active. As you can see, our first decal has been activated, but we barely can see the blood decal attached. Let's try and hit him one more time. The decal activates, but we still can't see any blood. Let's do it again. Now we can see the decal showing on the lower arm. Let's try again. Missed. One more time. Now the decal is showing on the head. Now for the last decal. It's working. 
Now let's add variation to the decal so that it will not look repetitive. To do this, we'll have the decal rotate randomly at the time we make it active. You can do this by making a random number ranging from 0 to 360 degrees. Okay, now that we have the basic feature set for the blood attached to the enemy, let's now add these decals to all our enemy models. As I tested the models, I observed that the blood is not enough for it to be noticed. So I made a feature that will duplicate the blood attached to the enemy and randomly rotate it if all the decals on the enemy are active. Okay, let's test it. Take notice of the guard with the kettle helmet. His face and helmet is drenched in blood now. This means that duplicates of the blood decals are now randomly added to a random part of his body. Same with this guard, where there are random multiple blood decals attached to his face, his arm, and his body. Now that we have all the guards set, I will proceed with the rest of the mercenary group. Just like the guard, I added the blood prefabs to each model and tested them individually to check for some bugs and errors. Here, we have a torchbearer whose blood decal spawns frequently on his chest. It contrasts well with his shirt. As for this torchbearer, the blood seems to blend with his red shirt, but it seems to be okay since our blood decals have a certain wet shine to it. Lastly, the acolytes. We will quickly attach our decals and test them individually. Look at his face. It's drenched in blood. This is because we hit him many times for the decals to spawn randomly on his face, resulting in many decals overlapping each other. Some of you guys commented to have the health of the acolyte lowered since the acolyte does not have any armor. I plan on doing this in the future and I plan on making the Acolyte more evasive. Because as of the moment, you can stun lock the Acolyte with consecutive attacks. Okay, now that we have all blood decals attached to our enemies, I think it would be best to attach blood decals to our player too. Making us drenched in blood for every time we hit an enemy and blood splatters around us. So, just like what we did with the enemies, I added blood decals to our skeleton's rig. And we will activate it once we hit an enemy. We will attach blood all over the skeleton's body, as well as the weapon and shield. But before we continue the path in making Skelly bloody, let's first fix that issue with the decals overlapping with the player and enemies. This is so that we can test the game decals more clearly when we test it on Skelly. So, just to give you an understanding of decals, there's an option for decals where you can select which layer the decals will render on. In our case, we want our blood decals on the ground to only project decals on the ground and objects only. At the same time, we want our blood decals attached to moving objects like the player and the enemies to only project on the player and the enemies meshes. So to fix this, we just need to separate the rendering layers of the game object meshes to render ground decals for our terrain and ground objects, player decals for our players, and our default decal layer for our enemies. Let's test it. Now, the blood decals on the ground no longer project on Skelly. Let's continue with making Skelly bloody. We will simply replicate what we did with the enemies, but this time, we will set the blood decals active on Skelly for every time we hit an enemy. Let's test it. Seems to work fine, but I feel that Skelly does not look too bloody with all that blood splattering. So let's add more prefabs to make it more bloodier. By the way guys, by the end of this video, I will be sharing a little bit of bad news that would make the development of this light a bit challenging, so stick around for the news. Now let's test everything we did. So here's our main character, the Wisp. One of your skills is to bind to trees to access a skill called Eyes of the Forest where you can check the surrounding area at a higher vantage point. You see, our game has no map, so having this skill is useful to know your location. Also, the Wisp has a mobility skill where you can dash around to evade hunters that want to capture you to trade you off for a higher reward than the usual rewards from gathering life essence. The Wisp can also conjure monsters using inanimate objects. One of the monsters you can conjure is the Skeleton, whose ability is to use tools and equipment that can use skills to fight against the human invaders. For example, the Skeleton can equip a shield and can use guard skills, or use a shield bash against enemies. Or he can use a sword for attacking. The Skeleton can also equip tools like axes to cut down trees or a pickaxe to mine rocks and metal ores. Now far from here, we have the mercenary group trying to harvest life essence. As usual, our goal is to kill the acolyte first, since his slow skill is difficult to deal with. 
I know that having one approach or strategy to an enemy group is bad game design. That's why I'll be changing the behavior of the acolyte to make him harder to kill first. I will have him more evasive and I will have him accompanied by a rear guard to help defend him when he's under attack. I also plan on nerfing the mobility for the enemies. I want them to be maimed and walk or run injured if they have low health, lowering their mobility. This will hopefully fix the issues with the fleeing mechanic being too tedious. Also, this will open a new strategy to lower the health of the guards first so that they will have a hard time running to the acolyte to defend him. Now that the acolyte is down, let's deal with the torchbearers. As you can see, the new blood system along with the new hit layer makes the hits feel good. I can't wait to add sounds to the hits to make it more impactful. Now let's finish off this torchbearer and kill all the guards in flea mode. So some of you guys were asking, what's the point or what's the reward for killing all the guards that are fleeing? In the future developments, as soon as we have the settlements, there will be human settlements and outposts scattered all around the island. And if an enemy group is fleeing near a human settlement, they will run towards it. If the enemy is fleeing make it to the settlement, it will trigger two of the following events. One event will make the settlement in alert mode and will have guards patrol around the area to tighten their security. Another event will trigger a hunt mode where mercenaries or hunters from the settlement will help hunt you down. So basically, the reward for killing the fleeing enemies is to prevent these events from triggering. Preventing a hunt that might get you captured or giving you the element of surprise if you decide to attack the nearby settlement. So right now, we've almost killed all the enemies. And as you can see, Skelly is now drenched in blood. I will add a feature in the future that will help clean this blood and I will have it tied to a skill that will help recover your life essence. Apart from life essence sprouting from trees, life essence can also be harvested from the corpses you've killed. Then you can use that life essence to recover your health points. Let's try and stagger this guard. Alright, we've staggered him. Now let's land more hits. The blood splattering looks good. It also complements well with Skelly's blood, the blood on the guard, and the blood streaks on the ground. What do you think? Do you like the new blood feature? If you do, feel free to hit the like button so that I will know that you like it. Also, if you've been watching my devlogs and you like the development progress so far, feel free to subscribe. It would really help me grow this channel. You see, these past days have been really hard on me. I just lost my job as a web developer and our family is now relying on a single source of income from my wife's freelance writing. Hopefully with the community's help, we will get this channel monetized so that we can fund the game's assets and push the development even further. Lack of income will not stop us from developing this dream game. I have several plans on where to get the funding to support the project and my family. One of which is Unity Affiliates. So if you want to support the game's development and if you want to acquire the blood asset that we're using, you can click on the asset link in the description below. Unity will give a small commission for every asset that is purchased from our link and all of the proceeds will go to the development of Wisplite. The next devlog I will talk about my whole situation as a solo indie game developer developing this game from nothing to hopefully something we can be proud of. Till next time.